When most people think of New York, they think of bustling streets, skyscrapers, and overpriced real estate. What most people don't hear about is the six million acre Adirondack Park, home to 115 towns and villages, the 46 high peaks, and some of the most remote wilderness in the country. To protect New York State's highly valuable water system, the state government declared the lands forever wild in 1894. This move stifled the logging industry, secured the future of the park's natural resources, and served as a model for the creation of many parks out in the American West. Growing up, each member of our party spent time across New York State exploring the great outdoors. Since then, we have all moved on to our careers and have found it increasingly difficult to escape the noise of everyday life. This trip will allow us to fully immerse ourselves in nature and will prove to be just as much a mental as a physical trip. After carefully reviewing maps of the park, we elected to explore the Ratcat River located in the Ampersand Wilderness region of the park. When canoeing the Ratcat River, most people start in Long Lake and travel north towards Tupper Lake. However, we elected to start in Tupper Lake, canoe to the Ratcat Falls, and turn around and head back to where we dropped in. This route would be free from portages and has several lean-tos, which are a first-come, first-served shelter for us to stay in along the way. Finally, with a plan in place, we packed our gear and hit the road. Protection should be a lot, lot smoother trip. We got more beer, we got more gear, ready to go, round two. <laughs> After an ideal first night, we were greeted on day two with a beautiful sunrise. We had just enough cell signal to get a weather forecast. There was a high chance of rain, but we didn't know how much and how often it would rain. We were faced with a difficult decision. We could choose to stay at our lean-to in relative safety, or we could continue onwards towards our objective. Before the trip, there was an indication that it would rain, 
so we attempted to waterproof our gear. Despite our best efforts, paddling in the rain would still risk getting our gear wet, and we'd also risk not having a sight at our next stop. Ultimately, we would choose to continue on in the hopes of being able to reach our final destination. As a light rain started to roll in, we stopped for lunch and hoped the storm would roll over. Little did we know, what we thought was going to be the worst of it was only just the beginning. I feel like all the bad karma I've collected over the past six months just hit me in one single day. I'm not miserable, I'm just miserably cold. And can't wait to eat and drink some bourbon. I got all the classics. I'm tired, I'm battling all day, cold, <laughs> hungry, wet, all the, all the bad ones. Hopefully we'll warm up here, get some good dinner, and save for tomorrow. We're all feeling really messed up from the rain. I think we paddled like six miles in like torrential downpour level rain. <laughs> Luckily, I think most of our gear, like the important stuff, stayed wet. Sleeping pad, uh, clothes, uh, food. We got MREs, so we're gonna dry off and hang out in this nice room to have dinner and get comfortable. But hopefully, tomorrow's a better day, but <laughs> today was definitely a test of character. <laughs> day two was rough. We were cold thoroughly soaked, and at times it seemed like the rain might never end. Luckily, we did manage to get a lean-to because if we didn't, drying off in tents would have been very difficult. The rain did also taper off, but we couldn't get our fire to stay lit because the wood was soaked. We went to bed early, hopeful the next day would bring better weather. On day three, we got up optimistic and confident that today's paddle would almost certainly be easier than yesterday's. So we set out for our final destination, the Rackhead Falls. So we got a couple of final updates coming your way. Uh, we're pretty much back. Um, this would be the final update before we, you know, put this whole video together. Four days, three nights on the Rat Cat. Uh, a lot of mosquito bites. 
uh, sponsored by Crocs. Wednesday was a little rainy, so we just got the footage that we could. Uh, and then Thursday we made it to High Falls. That was really fun. So after a couple of rainy days, it seems like we finally got some decent weather. Uh, ate some great food, drank 90 beers, and ran out. <laughs> uh, so next time we're bringing 96. It's a little bit colder than we anticipated. Temperature dipped quite a bit, so we've been canoeing in sweats, which is a first for me. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. I just want some McDonald's. I'm excited to be done with the trip and ready to go home and shower. One mile away from, from, from taking the boat out of the water. Sad it's almost over, but we'll be back soon. As for our story, this is just your average canoe trip. Truth is, we weren't exploring uncharted territory or completing the journey in some novel way. But what made this trip so special to us is the time we got to spend in the park. Every time I visit, I leave with a new appreciation for the people before us who fought to keep this park in its natural state. We hope this video inspires you to get out and appreciate the park for yourself. We believe that stewardship is a way forward for the park. Advocating for a sustainable and safe use of the park will only bring greater support for the effort to keep the park open to the public and forever wild. Cheers and thanks for watching.